Bonjour tank collectors that are into cartoons that is. Today we have the manga number WWT009, the ninth one in their series of the World War II's tanks, which is a video game to my understanding, of the French medium tank Samoa S35. That's probably not being pronounced properly. Asterix Kane is who drew these. Very good, man. It's very cool art. I like these, the box art on these things. Nice. Uh, this image shows German uh, markings because this tank was uh, repurposed by the German war effort when uh, after Germany invaded France. Uh, reading some Wikipedia info here, these tanks were produced uh, in the mid-1930s. Around 440 were built, weighing around 19 tons or so and uh, powered by a V8 engine of over 12 liters making like 190 horsepower this is some licensing I guess of the video game and then uh, there actually are some stats down here and actually probably a little blurb here so yeah, there's time it was considered a good tank but this is designed before World War II so <clears throat> it was still used all throughout the war but uh Crew of three. Okay, let's open this up. I have never heard of this tank, to be honest with you. I built a lot of tank model kits as a kid, but uh, I guess Tamiya never made a Samoa, or I, I don't know. Well, now the kid at least. <clears throat> All right. If you're new to modeling, these are a great subject. Ew, there's some weird like mold or something growing on this thing. That's gross. Maybe that's why I'm coughing a lot. All the time. Uh oh, is there only oh I thought there was only one trap in it. That would have been horrible. These are actually nicely molded rubber tracks. They're much smaller. These are the smallest tracks I've ever seen from this lineup so far. They're very thin. Uh, they, they're actually probably the most realistic tracks I've seen in this collection so far. Okay. Nice. So we do have the French markings and the German markings, which is great. I'm going to paint this as a French tank, and I'm going to save these German markings for another kit that didn't come with German decals. So that is quite convenient for me. Awesome. Decals are expensive. I looked up the cost of decal sheets, and <laughs> they're really expensive for what you get. I mean, they cost as much as cheap model kits. All right, well, it's uh, obviously a pretty small looking tank. And, uh, I've just started to measure the width of the hull and putting the scale in the descriptions. And it turns out these World War, War, these World War Tunes tanks are all over the map when it comes to scaling. So keep that in mind. All right, well, this is interesting. It's only one runner. I think this is the first one I've ever had one set of parts on this. Uh, very often they come on multiple runners. So the instructions are really quite clear, which is great. You know, you just got to read off the part number and then look at the direction arrows. And uh, sometimes I find that it's better to not put the hull together because if for some reason one of the parts is very loose, I like to glue them from the inside, so there's no chance of you know glue showing on the outside. Sometimes you don't have a choice. It's hard to say, you know, but that's just my experience from building a few of these now. Here's a German paint scheme, but uh, again, I'm gonna go with some sort of wacky French. Uh, I see some at the tank museum, and they have these interesting like horizontal camos. I've never seen a tank with horizontal striping like this. Usually it's vertical striping, so that'll be unique, and uh, I'm not sure if I can pull it off, but we'll we'll see what happens. It does give you some uh, lists here for you know what kind of paints you want to buy, and in particular if you buy AK paints, it'll tell you the part numbers. So as usual, I shall uh, fast forward to some music, and I'll uh, catch you at the end and talk about any sort of problems or whatever mods I have to make.
So we're back with a very painstaking paint process. Um, and the reason being is I bought some, some rattle can clear coat that frosted every like a lot of the stuff. So I had to go back and add a bunch of paint. And I was so frustrated I thought about even skipping the black lines and all that stuff. These black lines are with a display marker. Uh, so and then before that clear coat was this Alexan putty, masking putty that droops it doesn't stay in place so that pulled some paint and that was really frustrating so no frustration really against the model kit so much itself it's just that the paint process and the masking stuff i tried to use was just it just didn't work out right so i was originally going for this image here and then I, with the masking problems i just decided to freestyle different colors you know so you can see there's a little different stuff going on but they have they all have these funky horizontal schemes to them which is quite interesting before I move on I want to measure the scale of this I can't really measure the length of the short end and so I can't measure the height because I don't know where they're measuring to you know top of the turret or top of the the cupola I think that's called or the antenna so Wikipedia tells me the width of this thing is 2.12 meters and I'm gonna divide this number here I guess the width of this is 51.5 yeah 51.5 so this is around 141 142 scale 143rd it's somewhere in the low 40s so I'm gonna list it as 141 scale I guess all right all right let me get back into uh, issues I had here or talk about articulation things that pop into my memory turret wise yeah it's pretty straightforward this is one of the looser turrets uh, here's that clear coat you see <laughs> it just totally caked this I thought at first it was a reaction with the paint I did use a cheaper acrylic paint but it's not because I tested then this clear coat on just a plain piece of cardboard and it frosted that cardboard as well so it wasn't my hobby paint, it was just the rattle can paint. So I gotta throw away that paint or use it for something totally, or just use it for things that want to be white instead of clear. All right, uh, this hatch can be posed open, but the I felt like the hinges were so flimsy that I decided to crazy glue it shut. I didn't want to risk it. And just like on my Char B1, I glued this in place and mm -hmm. Even after it dried, after a day, somehow when I was painting it, I moved it downwards and I blocked off this uh, sight window. So I ended up shaving this post down and crazy gluing, it, crazy gluing it here and up here so it won't move anymore. I wish that was better designed. I decided to drill out this hole and these two holes here, whereas I think the last one that might have paint. This, this turret is identical, pretty much the one on the... Uh, the char b1 except for this it comes with the extra part to match the other turret but i decided to put the different turret on all right so yeah you get a tiny bit of movement out of that uh can in there and uh yeah that's it for the top you can see there keyways in a pretty logical location so it shouldn't fall out if you did lift it up by the top um one benefit of that white frosting is it created a texture to this so it looks like the tank is really old or even cast metal but uh, yeah I did have to go back and add all this color on top of that white and this was after the decals were done so yeah all right this rust here is a mix of rust paint by Vallejo and then some pigments of rust color orange color there's some uh, Tamiya paint wash in these uh, vents here yeah, that decal there is okay. All this black line work was a display pen. And then after that, I wiped it down with like some wet Q-tips to make it look weathered. It just looked weird to be solid black. Um, yeah, the tank treads do move, but I don't want to move them because the paint will fall off. Okay. Big headlights, kind of weird. But uh, I do like this here, how this hatch is so deep. You know, it's very dark in there. Very cool. I did add paint to these uh, other hatches. So, there's no air there. It's just a surface. It's pretty hard to paint these little buckles. 
so just take your time if you're going to do it. Uh, some of the parts I felt I did crazy glue them on the back side or on the inside surface. I felt like they might be loose. In fact, this one isn't glued at all because I thought I was going to repaint. I thought I was going to paint the box a different color, so I wanted that to be removed. Same with this. I haven't glued this in either uh, until I was totally finished with all the painting. And then as far as uh, after the painting and making it look old, besides the black paint, on the other stuff I used a, a wire brush, a brass brush, because I didn't use any hairspray between the, the primer and the colors. So you need to have something a little more aggressive to actually weather away some of the paint. So literally a copper or a, br a brass brush was used and some water to soften the paint. You might notice there's a chain here. This is like a just a cheap gin, like a chain I bought off AliExpress. You can buy it by the meter and it's like 50 cents or a dollar or something like that. And they come in different colors but this one was just a silver chain and so I painted it black before I mounted it on here. This is a, a red uh, paint marker by uh, Hobby Mio. Actually, I have too much red there. I gotta go back over it. So very often, if I want to remove paint, I have these eyelash uh, things, and they're pretty good at removing paint and find locations. But actually, I removed too much now, so I have to go back and add more red again. All right. Uh, this decal on the instructions. This should be right here, but I feel like I need something more in the back. I don't know what these arrows are, but I've seen them on a couple tanks now. Please leave a comment if you know. Uh, I did put the decal of what the tank was, but somehow fondling it, it wasn't dried off enough, so that got all messed up as well. Alright, well anyways, <clears throat> I think the end result is okay. In fact, I, I actually like it, except maybe the black lines. I feel like they're too thick using that display pen. I would have probably been better off if I used just a fine paint, uh, paintbrush to have done that. But I wanted to try out those paint pens. Alright, paint markers, or whatever you want to call them. So here's that Char B1, and you can see the turret, except for this part, pretty much identical with that. Again, I could have put this top, top part on that turret that had the part to do it, but I want my tanks to be as different as possible. So, yeah, this is a heavy tank, medium tank, so the sizing makes sense. What doesn't make the greatest sense is how the Sherman is so undersized. Uh, it's scaled so small, yet it's a medium-sized tank. It just it looks like a light tank instead of a medium tank in this little cartoon universe that uh, Meng, Meng modeled. Or video game universe, you, you call it. But I like how the French here, they have different you know camo styles. Again, I'd never seen a camo that was horizontal like that. It makes sense though, if you're trying to match the horizon of a field, you know, that have the stuff like that. Whereas, you know, vertical camo is more like if you're running through trees and bushes, which obviously happens as well. But uh, I really enjoy the differences. All right, so let's get these two out of here. A little cartoon figure. I don't know what this is. It was actually a crocodile girl. She literally had a crocodile tail and I just filled it, cut it off and put some putty back here. So now she looks like an army girl. And apparently today a French army girl. I actually didn't put all the decals on uh, this one. This one had uh, another French decal but this one never came with one so I put that one on this one. I don't know why this model kit only came with this one decal, Sassy Cassie, and no other decals. Very strange. So it's nice that this had two French uh, flag decals. So thank you for watching. Uh, these kits are really fun. I really like the end results. Uh, these cartoon tanks are just funny. Uh, so uh, stay tuned because I'm going to make every one of the, every one of these Meng tanks. All right, so I think maybe I'm close to halfway through the, the series now. All right, see you guys and girls.